Hi guys, <clears throat> I'm Big Dyson. I'm the Vice President and Director of Sales of Carter Broadcast Group. So basically my job is I think about how we make our money. But really today, um, it's about you. First of all, I wanna congratulate everybody. We made it through the pandemic. We're on the other side of it. And, what, and the reason I start there is because three years ago, it changed our world. You know, it changed how we do business. It changed how we socialize. It changed how we shop. Uh, we saw a lot of mom and pop businesses go down. We saw new businesses pop up. And let me talk, tell you a little bit about our experience. From March 17th of that year, we left our office and we decided to work remotely. And for three months, I watched our revenues decline. And my stress level was through the roof, although I was at home, but my stress level was through the roof. I'm like, oh my God, we have 30 employees. We're the oldest black owned and operated radio station in the country. How do I keep us moving forward? How do I keep us in business? But the one thing I knew, I'm a child of God and God's not gonna put anything on me that I can't handle. Mm -hmm. That much I knew. Regardless of the stress level that I was under, I knew that God had this and I just had to take a deep breath, step back, unfortunately watch the news. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and all other thing, all other crazy things that were going on at that time. So I congratulate all of us. We did get to the other side. Okay. Yes, it's not over yet. You know, I still see some people still fighting the virus. And anybody that's old, older, I'm, I'm 62 years of age. Anybody that's 50 or older, it, our world changed drastically based on how we used to do business or how we did business. Okay. Now, if you just look at Today was an, a, a, a real eye opener for me. I left my house, I live in Overland Park. I left my house at five minutes after seven. I got here an hour later. I'm like, wow, that used to be 40 minute drive. The construction, how many people are trying to find their way back to and from work and, and all the things. So our world has changed drastically. Today I'm here because I'm trying to make things a little bit normal. Obviously I'm a people person. I hate Zoom. I do 10, 12 Zoom calls a, uh, a week. I probably do 30 calls with clients a week to kind of figure out what their goals from a marketing standpoint are and helping them make decisions based on their business. And I gotta tell you, the the common theme in it all is where do I go from here now that I'm on the other side of the pandemic? So today I want to show you the tool that we, that we have, okay? And somebody's going to win a campaign at the end of the, the event tonight, today, okay? But I'm going to tell you who we are. I'm going to tell you about our business model. I'm going to tell you about our audience. And I have two of my staff members, my, one, a senior account executive who's been with me how long, Eric? 29 years. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and also my, one of my brightest managers, six years, seven years now? Yep. Okay, our digital manager. Um, so I'm going to kind of walk you through that. Then I'm going to pass the torch. And at the end of our session, you, you, you're free to uh, ask questions about who we are, how things may pertain to you based on the business that you're in. Note. My entire team, what we are, are really consultants, okay? Uh, my entire team, I, we're all veterans. Give you a little bit about my background. I didn't send my bio for a reason, but I just wanted to send, I don't know if, I sent a young picture of me because I like to see my, I like to think <laughs> I'm still, <laughs> okay? <laughs> my wife says, when we're the same age, my wife says, this is my 21st anniversary of my 39th birthday. So she never, <laughs> sa she never says how old she is. It's like, honey, that's, you got to think about that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you got to think about that. So she never, she never says how old she is. I'm okay with telling everybody I'm 62. But to give you an idea who I am, I am the son of a radio legend. My dad is Marv Dyson. He ran GCI and D103 for 36 years. He also made those urban properties the number one billing radio stations in America, okay? Of course, I grew up watching that. I grew up 
uh, really not wanting to do radio. Uh, um, uh, all my degrees and things were in engineering. Um, but of course, when you're the oldest boy of a Dyson, uh, you expect it to have that torch passed down to you. And I, by the time I got married, it, it was really clear that this was my calling. And so I moved to Kansas City in 1992 and I started selling for Oldies 95 and 710. And uh, it took me about 12 months to become the top biller there. Then of course, Bonneville bought, uh, no, yeah, Bonneville bought Gannett, then Intercom bought Bonneville. And within two year period of time, the, it went from two stations to eight stations as far as ownership. And in that window of time, I had to kind of figure out my way, I had to figure out what was going on in Kansas City, I had to figure out how I wanted to approach the business. And the number one way that I still do today is I build relationships. And I build them for years long. I mean, I have friends, God, I've been doing this for 30 some years now. I have friends that remember me back when I first started and I have great relationships with them. So. Of course, that's kind of how I will close, but really, a couple of things I want you to think about. I want you to think about your personal business, your business competitive advantage, and what the pandemic has done to you and what you're trying to get back to, okay? I will start with our presentation. Of course, we'll talk about uh, who we are, the Carter Broadcast Group. This year is our 73rd anniversary. Skip Carter was the founder him and his wife was the founder, okay? Uh, and then shortly thereafter, he passed. Millie then ran the radio station and then the station was passed down to my boss, Mike Carter, who's also my, my buddy, my golfing buddy who I kill every week. <laughs> um, and so right now, uh, Mike Carter is the president of our company. I'm the vice president and director of sales. We have 36 employees. Um, and we are very proud to be serving the Kansas City community. Note that I said serving, not operating. Okay. Um, obviously, our radio stations are Hot 103 Jams, which is our big bad boy signal. Okay. Um, Austin knows how I think, and so he put this in big bullet points for me. <laughs> <laughs> Our composition of, of our radio station, 41% male, 59% female. Ethnic comp, 56% African American, 30% other, and 13% Hispanic. Our age comp, kind of it breaks out pretty clearly there, 11% from six to 11 years of age, 12 to 17, 9%, 12%, 18, 24, 21%, 25, 34, and so on and so on. Our total reach, which is the important part, this is how many people we talk to on this station per week. Okay? Um, and what the pandemic did to us, pre-pandemic, that number was closer to 300,000. Mm -hmm. The pandemic changed how people listen to radio because they weren't going into the office anymore. So our morning drive numbers just, boo, kind of fell off the table, along with our revenues as well, okay? Go to the next one, bro, please. Okay, Gospel 1590 is our other station. Probably, in my opinion, people that listen to that station are the most loyal listeners in the market because it's a lifestyle. It's not so much of the music they, they chose, but it's a lifestyle, okay? And there again, you can read the, the, the gender comp and ethnic comp. And again, this was closer to about 18,000 pre the pandemic. So probably if you just look at the, the percentage of what are, how our listeners they didn't leave the radio station. They just don't listen how they used to. And so from a measuring standpoint, that's probably quick math in my head, probably 30% drop in, in net reach between the two properties. Right, and about close, mm -hmm. about 30%, 25, 30%, okay. 
This is our new baby. And if and if yeah. and this is where you guys are gonna get this is our new radio station. Let's let's talk about uh, listener habits. Okay, and in our business there are P1, P2, and P3 listeners. P1 listeners mean that that's the only station they listen to. P2 listeners are uh, are people that listen to the station but have another radio station. Like for me, I'm a for our station. I want to come 62 of years of age. So of course, demographically, musically, let's put it that way. I'm not so much into that. I grew up with uh, old school R&B. Uh, Isley Brothers, uh, Luther Vandross, Earth, Wind and Fire, all those great bands is who I grew up listening to. So what's on the air right now for me, my boys like, I have a 25 and a 20 year old son, they love it. But not so much for me. Maybe at night, <laughs> maybe at night with the quiet storm, but not in the middle of the day. But it's important to understand how you should separate yourself from what you like to who your market is. Okay? And maybe your market is really into this in that age demo. If you can go back for a minute, yeah. Austin, to KPRS comp. If your buying demo is between 24 and 44, what you can tell is where the core of our audience is based on percentage, then that's probably something you should be paying attention to. Okay? So the point I'm making there and where we are, as you can see with KPRS, we're going young. With gospel, we're going older Christian. And with this, it's going to be old school R&B. So each station is going to have their lane. And so probably when we launch, I won't tell you that, but when we launch, it's going to be soon. But when we launch, we will be able to add all that cue and own the African-American listener, brown, Hispanic, okay? And of course, our gospel will be the three. So we will probably have between three, 320,000 listeners in a given week on those three properties. Okay. Note that I said service. Our service is simple. My team is an extension of me, meaning that they sit down with our clients across the city, figure out what their needs, wants, and basically their goals are, and figure out how to tap into the audience that you're looking for for your business. That's what we do. Okay. Um, that being said, um, if you're an old school R&B person, make sure to tune in because I think our promos and things and all that are going to start running here in the next two, three weeks. Mm -hmm. um, but in, and of course, that demographics for that station, like I said, it's going to be 45, 64. So you see we're picking up where KPRS, KPRS drops off. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can go to the next one, bro. All right. Radio. Social media and all these other things that come with us is, is in the Geeks Are Us lane. <laughs> um, and Austin is, is really off the charts on that. And I'll let him uh, go through that because I think he's better than I. Um, but at the same time, as, as we get through this um, and you have questions, whatever, feel free to ask. Because, again, part of what we do is consult and help people with the decisions from a marketing standpoint. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Vic. Mm -hmm. Well, he's not the easiest guy to follow after making a speech <laughs> like that. So I will try and wrap this up, put a nice little bow on it for us, guys. Um, some things, you know, obviously when you're working with a, a radio station, first thing that comes to mind is, duh, the radio spots, right? But there are a lot of things that we're known for outside of radio that a lot of clients overlook when they're utilizing us for their advertising. One of which is, we have the second largest following of any radio station in Kansas City. We're second only to The Rock, um, but we have over 120,000 combined followers um, on our social media accounts. Um, if your audience engages really well with Facebook, we can absolutely put your, audio, you know, put your message out through our Facebook channels and you will see so much more engagement and lift than maybe just doing it on your own. 
We also have our concert calendar. Uh, we have an extensive email database. If you have upcoming events or community events, send them our way. We have a community event calendar that we put up that just is there for free to the community to say, here's what's going on. Um, think of it as like our own little visit KC calendar. But uh, so always send your events in to us. We also offer web banner ads. We have 60,000 visits to our website every single month. Um, as you can imagine, a lot of people come to our website first if they're trying to find concerts in our genre. So if our audience is important to you, having a web presence with them would be a good idea as well. We also do custom promotions where we will build entirely something for you. If you want to do a cutest pet contest leading up to Halloween, uh, if you want to do, you know, some sort of feel good written submission story around the holidays and give something away. We can absolutely build that for you. And those opportunities are always available. We have pre-built that come out throughout the year. We also can always build them for you too. But when I came over to Carter, I was put in charge with building us an in-house digital agency. Some of you guys have seen me in here before talking about some of our digital services and some of the things I'm able to help you out with. Um, but today I wanna to tell you what Carter can help you out with and really boils down to four key areas that we help out with. And they all are in online paid advertising. Um, our, our core, what my specialty is, I've been doing the last 10 years, is in targeted display advertising. You've probably heard this referred to as geofencing, geotargeted, geodisplay. Um, we're able to do all of it. You can target your competitors, you can target specific events, you can target a nearby neighborhood, you can even target a household based off its demographics. Um, and we can serve ads to them on their mobile devices, tablet, desktop computers. Um, we even can do smart TVs and connected TVs in, in that regards too. Um, we also offer paid search. My team is fully Google, Microsoft, uh, Google Ads, Google Analytics, and Microsoft certified so that we can get you on all the major search engines. Um, you may be currently doing some SEO efforts, but if you're working with an SEO agency, ask them what keywords they're struggling with right now. And if they're not currently buying them through Google or using a supplemental strategy to help you on that side of things, we can always help you out with that. We're not an SEO agency though, so please don't come to us for SEO. Um, we also help with online video. This is one of my favorite things here lately, and obviously you guys have all heard the buzzword in the last couple of years of OTT and connected TV, and a lot of people ask, what does that mean? I can't even tell you half the time because the acronym is kind of dumb. But um, <laughs> really, I, I love online video, especially YouTube. A lot of people think that YouTube's super expensive. In fact, of all those listed up there, YouTube is the cheapest. Um, I have a client right now that during the entire Chiefs season, we were targeting Chiefs content and everything surrounding the Chiefs and Kansas City Sports Network and everything, they were all over it. Um, Era actually was in that commercial and had a lot of her friends and stuff come up to her and saying, hey, we saw you in a commercial recently. Um, and the last thing we offer is paid social. Uh, we do not only Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, but we can help you out with TikTok. A lot of people overlook Pinterest and Reddit and LinkedIn as part of their marketing strategy. So all of those areas are available. Um, and with all of these things, we offer full in-house creative development, which is included with your campaign as well. Um, we also own the Kansas City's only mobile LED billboard truck. Uh, you will see it starting this Thursday through Sunday, circling the draft. Um, it is a 10 foot wide, seven foot tall LED billboard screen, which rotates other advertisers. It's very affordable. Typically outside of the draft, it runs a route of like the plaza to Westport through Crown Center and Union Station, you know, downtown and through Power and Light and then back and forth um, every Friday and Saturday, or first Friday every month and then every following Saturday. But other than that, guys, that's pretty much our station and what we offer uh, in a very consolidated, quick presentation. I apologize, went over just a couple minutes there, but uh, try to get everything in front of you guys as quick as possible to let you know who we are and what we're about and, and how we can help. And Vic, you had mentioned something about a, uh, a giveaway. Yes. How do you want to go about doing that? Uh, cards. Yeah, Did if you we can get cards? some business, business cards. cards. How much are you thinking for this giveaway? I'm thinking uh, $1,000 on KPRS and 500 on our new property once oh, we you launch. Oh, you those are. Wow, that's pretty cool. Let's see. Do you have your cards? I work for the chamber. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Awesome. Any questions? Thank you. Anybody have? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Perfect, appreciate it. That's everybody back here? Yep. Excellent. How has been the growth since Mr. Carter started it? Back. Mm -hmm. Pre the pandemic, uh, I came on board and, well, I can tell you from after 9 11, so right? For a second, that you following this year was a disaster. Um, and from 2002 to 2011, we were on a rocket ship. From 2011 
uh, when I say rocket ship, uh, I want to say 40% growth in, in revenues. Um, then we flattened out um, in 2011 when the economy kind of tanked, uh, and we re remained at that level. And then when the pandemic hit, give you an idea how bad the pandemic hit radio. Kansas City is about an $85 million radio market, meaning that advertisers, national advertisers, spend about $85 million in, in marketing per year. When the pandemic hit, it would drop from 85 to 63, which meant there are 29 radio stations in the market, and we're the mom and pop, so one other mom and pop in the market, which is Union Broadcast Group, 810, okay? Um, Sandy and I are very close because our battle's the same, okay? Um, last year, the market, so still, uh, it's coming back slowly. Um, last year, the market finished at 73. Okay, so it's still down $12 million, okay? So everybody was thinking that uh, when, once the pandemic's up, everything's gonna boo jump back up the way it was, not the case, not the case by a long shot. People are slowly trying to figure out their way back based on the new business plan, the plans that are out there. And I, I like I said, I, I'm, Zoom calls do me no uh, <laughs> justice just because um, I'm a very personable person, so I get to know people in, a, in their business. It's hard for me to ask the difficult questions on a Zoom call. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, most people don't think about their competitive advantage or their competitive disadvantage. And there's a way to help people figure that out and figure out how that, that thought process can help you with where you need to be going from a marketing standpoint. I think that's probably the best thing that my team does mm -hmm. is help you figure out new things, things you should be doing or things you haven't thought about. Mm -hmm. um, so I work for a high school and I have a lot of students recently that are interested in media and marketing. Mm -hmm. um, can you, if you could talk to a young person, what are some things that you would say to them about <laughs> getting into the field or like things they need to look out for or advice, any of that? What they should probably do is have a conversation with me. Okay. okay? Um, seriously. Okay. And I say that because I, I speak on the university level a lot. Mm -hmm. And that's probably when I retire, probably where I'm headed. Um, but what kids forget because of these damn phones, <laughs> their career is behind this. Now, I'm going to always say, because I'm on the sales side, yes, programming is important. But where the money is, <laughs> is on the sales side, if you like people. I like people, so no is not in my language. It's okay. What did I do or didn't do to get no? I seldom get no, because I always do my homework. So students coming out of school should understand two things. They see TV and everybody thinks they need to be, have their face on the screen or whatever, all that, you know, because they think that's the cool thing or they think on the music side because they're so caught up into the music. Kids that want to go into music is a, is a tough road. Part of my family's in the music business, okay? And their stress level is through the roof because record labels are dying, you know, because. Folks aren't, are, are figuring out what to do, you know, um, how to market their own music and things like that. So the world is changing drastically. These phones, these iPads, whew. and an era will tell you not long ago, you couldn't communicate to me via text. If somebody texts me, pick up, I, I had a, a response, pick up the damn phone. <laughs> <laughs> but now I find myself in the office, my phone going, I'm texting, and my iPad is open. Yeah, I'll that's forth crazy. I'll forth the text. But that's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. And I don't shut down. I didn't go to bed till one o'clock last night. Mm. And it's because I never, which is why I don't do social media. I would never sleep. Mm -hmm. Our world is not. We're not in control of it anymore. 
you know, uh, you know what, instead of the cards, if somebody can get close to this, you're the winner. I'm going to ask a question. How many impressions, meaning billboards, TV ads, radio commercials, TV commercials, do you think you come in contact with a day? Anyone, anybody want to guess? If you come within 500, you win. If you come within 500, you win. Huh? One dollar, Bob. <laughs> anybody want to guess? Close. Oh. Big uh, <laughs> <laughs> She's absolutely correct. From the ad you drive by, guys, on your phone alone, mm -hmm. on your phone alone, <sighs> depends on how long, how long you're on it, though. Mm -hmm. don't, don't, you, don't we all get these reports? Uh, how much time you spent? Maybe it's yeah. just me. <laughs> Do y'all get that? <laughs> okay. Uh, there's another... Uh, display in there that uh, you got to go deeper into your phone and kind of give you an idea how many ads you've you've seen from how much you're on the road to your car to your TV to your cell phone to your iPad uh, where else I'm missing yes uh, guys you're in and that number is continuing to grow it's going to continue to grow because our lives are so segmented now mm -hmm. versus, you know, I can honestly say 10 years ago, I went to the office. I, did, I, I, I helped my, my team every day. I left the office every Tuesday and Thursday at 3.30 because I played in golf leagues, okay? On Friday, I worked to noon, okay? And then I left it open for clients that would take them to lunch or whatever. And then that was my week. Now I forget what day it, what day it is. Mm -hmm. And I'm blessed to be married to my best friend because anybody else, we do live well though, so maybe that's the deal. But anybody else, <laughs> anybody else? Mm -hmm. She shares me with radio, she shares me with golf, she shares me with family. She, I mean, she, she'll say in a minute, I'm a golf widow. Or she'll say, um, but she understands that's who I am and, and what I do. I'd like to address her question. Mm -hmm. Was that you that asked yes. the question? Mm -hmm. uh, internship. Yep. They need to look for internships at the radio station. Is there wanting to get into that? Internships. Um, any opportunity to reach out to say, hey, my extra time, I'm willing to be on the streets helping your promotional team, doing things. To kind of get them acclimated because a lot, I can't tell you how many of our full timers started out as interns. That's true. And, and because they were around and they knew it and they were, they, it was an easy transition when a job became. I still want to draw from this. Yeah. So I have a question. Go ahead. At two, are you related to Eric Michael? Dyson? Yes, he's my cousin. <laughs> 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 my whole family, we're in media <laughs> and, and, or music. We were having a conversation before um, this event started about how nonprofits could use radio. Um, and so, do you have any recent examples of like nonprofit organizations and how they've used your media campaigns to reach? If I All can. the time. Yep. We work with a lot of nonprofits here locally, um, especially during the pandemic. We became partners with pretty much all the big foster and adoption uh, nonprofit organizations. One thing I would always tell when I hear somebody say the word nonprofit, I ask, are you taking advantage of the Google ad grant currently for your nonprofit? Because mm -hmm. a lot of people overlook that it's free $10,000 a month of Google credit that they'll let you use uh, for their properties. Always make sure you're using it if you're not. But uh, um, absolutely, with nonprofit space, we've been doing a lot. We did, since we're a community first station, um, and we've always prided ourselves on community service. In fact, we've won how many Crystal Awards for community service on a national level? Two. Two. Um, that we we always try to do PSAs um, and things like that. Try and cut our nonprofits as best of deals we can to to make sure that they're getting their message out there and thriving. Who's Lindsey Brown? There you go, Lindsey. Oh, perfect. 
There you go. What does she win again? She's going to win an ad. She's going to work with ERA. She's going to win an ad campaign on KPRS. And our newest property, when it launches, tune of $2,000. All right. Any other questions? <laughs> reason we're here, good question. Yeah. Reason we're here, Jackson County is the core of our audience. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have this big bad booming signal. Our signal goes all the way. You don't lose it till MU. Um, north, almost to the, the state line to Iowa. Uh, right before you get to K State West. And I play golf south all the time. I don't lose. Uh, our signal, signal till. I thought you were going to say that. Gonna say that. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that. He'll say that too, so that's why I was not surprised. Uh, Actually, I'm going down 35, and I'm almost to Emporia. I lose, I lose it right before yeah, Emporia. We have a big, bad, booming signal on. Uh, our 1069 won't be that powerful. It'll be the, the city, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, our Jackson County is the core of our audience. On the Missouri side. And that's true for all of our stations. I mean, uh, Jackson County consistently for Hot 103 Jams, we're usually number one, two, or three in rankings for Jackson County specifically. So um, it's our largest concentration of our audience overall. Do they break stations down by the type of, like, news or? The format? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're all formatted. But when you when a market's looked at, like uh, Kansas City's market 32, uh, Los Angeles, no, yes, Los, Los Angeles is number one, New York is two, Chicago's three, okay? And it's broken down by population, okay, and revenues. So that can give you an idea from a, a ranking standpoint, you know, like LA is probably, if Kansas City's 85, God, LA is probably something crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, now that's the overall market. Yeah, yeah. So you have different formats within that market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then usually every format is a niche market, yeah, like a news talk, talk country, yeah, yeah, yeah. that yeah. kind of deal. You guys are really smart. You ask me questions I don't know I'm going to get. <laughs> Any other questions for this lovely group here? No? You guys well, know what it is, top Pardon me? Talk radio. talk radio on our gospel station. We're on our gospel station, and it depends on uh, the type of talk radio. Yeah, but that's the only station right now that's formatted for us to have shows, ministries, churches. Yeah, talk, the talk format is yeah. really tight. Mm -hmm. yeah. And really, um, Rush Limbaugh, kind of, he's, he, he's passed, but Rush took talk radio mm -hmm. to a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I, you know what? I don't see anybody coming through that can take that on like he did. He was amazing. I used to sell Rush, and I got to tell you, I would walk into places of business, and he was like, I want Rush. All right, <laughs> 500 bucks a spot. I don't care. I want Rush. <laughs> it was that, I mean, it was just that powerful. Crazy. I will say this, though, uh, on our on Hot One of Three Jams, uh, because we had, I, I work with a lot of pastors in the city, and they um, didn't want to talk to the church. They wanted to talk to what they believed was the unchurched. And thus, they wanted to be on our urban station. But because we don't have block programming and slots for that, I created a ministry moment. And it allows, a, it's a 40 and a, and a 20 married together to make a 60 second commercial. But it allows the pastor to give some encouraging, uplifting, so that our listeners can hear what the pastor sounds like, what his message is like. And then the 20 seconds is where the church is located, mm -hmm. service times and things like that. So I've also created a, a financial moment and I've created a, a medical moment. So mm -hmm. those are just some creative ways of doing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys, I appreciate your time. Thank you everybody.